Oh. I don't want to DBA today. I don't have the brain for technical topics, so let's do something fun, shall we? Where's the go button? All right, here we go. Hey, fellow DB2 nerds. Today we're not going to do the technical. We're going to talk about resources. These are things that I've bookmarked over time, places I go to for help, and they can range from anything. It could be a IBM specific technical site. It could be a blog. It could be a PDF file. It could be people to pay attention to on Twitter. These are all things that I use pretty regularly, and I thought I'd pass the list on to you. But before we get started, if you are finding these useful, do me a favor, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That way you can see what's coming up every week as I release episodes. All right, you ready? Let's go ahead and get to this list. I love opening problem management records. It said no DBA ever. It's something we all have to do. We've gone through the normal PMR process online and on the phone. But we have a new option, which I initially thought was a gimmick, but I found to be very useful, and that's through the Ask IBM Analytics Support Twitter handle. You can go here to ask pretty much anything, but I found them to be very useful for the level 3, level 4 PMRs you would ask that could normally be deprioritized or languish in the normal PMR system. They're very responsive, and they'll even respond to PMs. So next time you have a PMR, this is an option. Go check it out. I cannot relay the importance of going to the DB2 Night Show for free education. This show has been filming since 2010, and you can watch every episode from 2010 to now. He has hundreds and hundreds of hours of education there for free. And this is produced by Scott Hayes, who's an IBM Gold consultant and business partner. And he's one of the best performance and tuning champions I've ever seen. And the people he brings on the show are top tier. When you're attracting an IBM fellow and DB2 architect like Matt Huris, and well-established speakers like Melanie Stopfer or Ember Crooks, you know you have quality content. And it's not just for LUW, it's for ZOS too. So make sure this is one of the places you go check out to improve your skill set and continue your education. What can I say about Reddit? If you're not familiar, it's known as the front page of the internet and there are threads upon threads about topic on topic. And there's even a little corner carved out for DB2. You'll find me out here quite often, and I'll be stoking conversation and answering questions. I find it to be less snarky and more helpful than Stack Overflow, and I find it to be more conversational and less marketing than Twitter. So come out, check it out, say hi, and contribute to the conversation. Good old Fix Pack Central. If you don't have this bookmarked, you should. This is the place you go for anything and everything for binaries and fix packs. And if you didn't know, after 9, 7 or so, all fix packs are cumulative. So if you go out there and you grab fix pack 9, for example, you're going to grab the base install as well as all fix packs up to 9. So it's one stop shopping for you to grab and go. db2commerce.com is one of those critical websites that you need to have bookmarked either for general education or to help you find things when you're in pain. It's so useful and used so often that it often will come up equal to or a little higher than Knowledge Center on Google searches. It's written by Ember Crooks, an IBM Gold consultant, who's been writing this pretty religiously for four years, almost weekly. She has over 500,000 words written in over 480 articles. There is a ton here to check out. Go explore and see what you can find. GitHub. If you're not an application development DBA, you may not be as familiar with it as, say, a developer. But essentially, GitHub is a code repository with all sorts of various script and SQL out there for you to use. 
there are a couple places I'd like to visit here, and there's more if you actually Google for DB2. But I want to mention Andreas Gomez Casanova. He actually has a pretty good repository out there for DB2 specifically. Then you have Marcus Winnand, who is the author of Use the Index Luke and is just generally knowledgeable about all things RDBMS. And finally, you have me. I've been publishing my scripts up there for about a year for public use. And you're going to find that if you see I use any scripts or code in Discover DB2 episodes, I will automatically plop them there for you to get. So go out there, explore, and more importantly, go contribute. LUW Academy is what Y Channel wants to be when it grows up. It's been around again for four years, almost as long as db2commerce.com and has over 130 different videos on any topic from the basic to the advanced. This is one of those channels that could be used for just general education or when you're in pain and you need to watch how something specifically done. Go check it out. You're going to find something there that's very useful. IBM Red Books. Back in the day, they actually used to be large red books. And I like Red Books because they're not quick hit blogs. They are not anything written from technical support like a white paper. These are in-depth books on a discipline of topics. So if you're about to do something like introduce HADR into your architecture for the first time and you don't know best practices or even how it's done, you can go get a book that's 250 pages that has a detailed description of how to do this as well as best practices. The topics range anywhere from Watson to DB2 to just IT infrastructure in general. So go out there and see what meets your needs. Just a quick note on Redbooks. If you didn't see on screen, they actually have an app. It's really useful. It used to be you had your big thick books or if you wanted to get a red book now and you didn't want it on your screen or laptop, you were going to end up wasting a lot of paper. But you can actually pull it up on a tablet or laptop now and it has full access to the library. You can browse by subject or do a search and get to what you need. It makes it a lot easier and it doesn't limit you to your laptop. If you're not looking for something as heavy as a red book, but you still want something with technical meat, you may want to go check out IBM Developer Works. There is a lot here from smaller articles to blogs to technical notes. And I find that a lot of the quick hit interesting stuff is here, especially around one of my favorite blogs called Thoughts from Support. And if you paid attention to the Twitter handle I passed out very first thing when I started this episode, you have Ask Analytics Support. If you're watching that Twitter handle, a lot of times you'll see, hey, we found something interesting and we wrote a quick blog on it, or there's a new tech note out, go check it out here. And this is where it shows up. So this is one specific blog, Thoughts from Support, but there are hundreds and hundreds of them out here over multiple different topics and disciplines. It's one place I really wouldn't pass up. If you ever have to open a support ticket or a PMR and you need to get files to IBM, it sometimes can be a giant pain in the butt. You have to get the files zipped up and move to your desktop and then from your desktop attach it to a ticket and through the internet and send. It's a hassle. Sometimes the easiest thing to do is to zip everything up on the server and send it directly from there. But it's not always obvious how to do that. So one of my bookmark pages that I always have to refer to is the SFTP instructions to get something to IBM support. The last thing to make sure to bookmark is the My Notifications page at IBM. More importantly, create an ID which is free and get yourself set up to get notifications about DB2. This is where I depend on getting information on hyper APARs or things that need to be addressed immediately. But they'll also tell you about end of support dates and fix packs and any big news that's coming out about the product. It prevents me from always having to go and seek out what's going on. It's just delivered straight to my inbox. Well, that's about it. 
at least that's the comprehensive list that I can think of. There may be some odds and ends I could have relayed, but these are the critical ones I think everybody should know about. Now I ask this question every so often on Reddit and Twitter and other different mediums. So what do you have bookmarked? Is there something I'm missing or I don't know about? Leave it in the comments section. I'd really be curious because later on I'll amend this list and do another episode. And as always, if you got something out of this or the other videos, please take time to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with what's coming out.